Yeah. So yeah, that's what you're talking about where someone's speeding up usually from a cross court ball. So Ben's thinking cross court, that's the most common yeah. speed up. And it should be said that everything about my doubles pickleball game in men's was designed to compliment Ben from the very start, because Smart. when mm. I first started, um, Ben's like, obviously you're a really good tennis player, you're a great table tennis player. You have me, we're going to play together eventually. I need you to develop everything to compliment me. And I was like, done. Like, I'll do that. Whatever you need, you tell me. Um, yeah. So that includes forehand dinking. Um, one of the most important shots that Ben put his finger on is the slide backhand. So fading um, because he's going to be playing the left and he's going to be covering metal with the forehand. Pickleball, as Ben likes to say, was not is not designed to be played 50-50. You should not be covering 50% of the court. It depends on where the ball is. And in my mind, yeah. the perfect team is a lefty-righty to where that could apply to both sides. But since we're both right-handed, Ben's going to take more of the court. It's just the reality of it. Um, it doesn't even necessarily come back, come down to that he's the better player. He is. But it's more of that's the way you need to cover a pickleball court. Because especially when somebody's speeding up, you don't want to have to guess for him back in. Because that little split second throws your timing off enough, makes you late yeah. enough to where their follow-up is going to be much better. So from the very start, Ben's like, I want you to work on this shot where you slide to the right, you sit on your backhand, you know it's going to be a backhand, and just leave anything to your right. Because if you're far enough over, anything to the right side of your body is going to go wide. Um, so yeah. there's really nowhere to go. And he developed that with his other partners as well. So like Anna Lee, he's been teaching her how to do that. It's just nice that she has like the nastiest two-hander on the planet. Yeah, right. So. Seriously. It's actually something I also learned from Simone and not that she taught it to me. It's that when I was playing skinny singles with her and I would try to speed up at her, she would do the same slide with the two hander. And I was like, that looks like a good shot. I'm going to try that. <laughs> and I kind of combined that with the one hander that Ben taught me. And of course, playing with Ben, you get a lot of, a lot of opportunities to hit it. And it's really just about shifting your body out of the way so that it's not a target. And the target zone is on a side that you know it's going to be on, uh, namely the backhand, because the backhand just covers so much area. And it really just presents no open court to the opponent. If Ben keeps the dink low enough and they're trying to force a speed up, I've got my corner covered with all backhand. So good luck trying to get it through. And if you go middle, Ben's sitting there in the forehand. And the whole idea of that is designed to be, it's designed to wind up to Ben's forehand, whether it's yeah. the first ball or the second ball. So in an ideal world, I hit a clean winner on it if they speed up at me. But a lot of times, the guys with good hands will get the next one back. But then the reply will go directly into the jaws of Ben's forehand, which yeah. is where we want the ball to go. And then it's good night, and that's exactly where we want to live. And if you want to try to roll the dice and go through the middle to Ben's forehand, good luck with that as well. So I feel like our system, our slide system, is one of the hardest to beat. And it's not that I'm the world's best counterpuncher, but if you give me a backhand and I tee it up, and we have Ben sitting there in the middle. It's it's a tough proposition. It's uh, definitely one of the harder systems to beat in the game. I feel like, and I'm glad that we started out by uh, practicing that. It's basically like uh, a Michael Jackson moonwalk with a sick backhand finish. I mean, that's what it looks like. <laughs> to me. Yeah, you just you just flow out of the way and counter, dude. It's so sick. I love that how you talk about the ownership of Ben taking the middle too, because it's the same in. In our game, it's like if a guy's jumped over me and I got the tailwind, like there's a crosswind in my corner, we call it like the hot corner, right? So I'm in the trenches here and I just have to own that middle no matter what scenario happens if the ball's coming from that area. And that leaves so much more uh, ability for us as a team to process what kind of ball they're going to give us because we already know who has what ownership versus like the constant guess or when you play with people that don't understand the angle and the trajectories, they're like, well, that's my middle. And it's like, well, dude, if you just let me own this at all times, we would both be more confident and make a better decision long-term and get ourselves out of these rallies or speed up rallies that happen because we have a job to do. We have ownership in each scenario. Because if it crosses over, you know, it changes the angle that all adjusts. But I love that you say that because I do that same thing. I go, hey, my middle, no matter what, even if the ball is like almost hitting his high left shoulder, I'm still owning that middle because we can count on that and then I can, we can make a better play as a team. It's cool to, to have people understand that a little bit better, even just through pickleball. Like, no, it's not like a 50-50 game. We got to adjust and move, and there should be ownership with that left-sider being a right-hander for sure. Like, it's like a 
Oh yeah, that, that's so interesting, the parallels that apply on that as well. And I'll tell you something that also helped me on that, with that mindset is playing and teaching platform tennis at Baltimore Country Club where I worked. Um, so I taught and played that for three years and it's exactly the same size as a pickleball court. And there's chicken wire around the court, which you can play it off the walls, making it sort of like squash. But the parallel that I really found was the simplicity of the shot selection and whose ball is whose. Anything yeah. over your partner's left shoulder is your ball. There's no deviation from that. Um, unless you're a lefty righty, and even so, it depends on the position of the players. You yeah. can't deviate because even though it might not look like you're putting your team out of position, you are. And if you just stick to something very concrete like that, and you have a system, if you're not reaching for that one ball to the center, your partner's so sure that ball is his that it just makes for a better system overall. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting to hear that that applies to volleyball in the same exact way. Yeah, the same thing. It's like, oh, let's minimize this effort and, and confusion and maximize, look, ownership and then control of that scenario. It's like, dude, the outcome is significantly better when we just have that structure, right? And of yeah. course, there's the random audibles where, you know, maybe you can poach one and pick it off because the angle is a little bit different. But that's such a good thing for people to hear and understand is like, look, this, you need to establish your, uh, your structure and your team chemistry too. Because like you said, Ben's like, dude, I need you to be this for me so we can maximize our potential. I think that's yep. something that I've done too with every partner. Some guys like I'm better at the right side. I'm like, sweet, dude, I play both and I'm not scared. I'll go over to the left, you know, and I'll deal with the left side. Or this guy's like, dude, I'm really confident on the right. All right, I'll go over on the right. And I think being able to, to, to systemize that for your partner and be elevate together, that's, that's so huge. So it's cool that you guys train that way, like specifically, because we do the same thing. It's so cool. <laughs> yep. And uh, definitely something where you don't want indecision. And, yeah. and if you remove that entirely, I feel like that's part of the reason why Ben and I play so well together is we know whose balls, whose at all times. And when he plays with other partners, once in a while, you'll see it doesn't happen often because they're great players, but sometimes they take a ball that he wants. And I feel like I do a pretty good job of getting out of the way, which is uh, part of yeah. the system. And it's not, again, because I'm that much worse. It's because we have a system and we don't deviate from it. That's so rad. It's cool because, sorry, Thomas, I'm just, I'm feeling it right now. I played the first time I played with like a really elite, like I played a few Olympians, like coming through the ranks and they would kind of be like, Oh, here's the young kid with the energy. He's bringing all the fire and, and they would pick me up and right and bring me into the main draw. And I went through a couple, but then when I landed on this one named Jay Gibbs, he is like very, very similar to how you play Colin, where he's, he's makes all his shots. He's super consistent. He's even keeled. He's not like super high or low. He brings fire, but he's not like, going to be in your face all the time and what it did for me is it took me from being this guy that was just like all energy and if it was I was like a roller coaster I was unstoppable or I was in the trenches right it helped me like level out and it's cool because you can see like you and Ben are both kind of similar in that way but with the way that you your body language and your control is so like like calming and balanced that it makes it really fun to watch because I've personally seen and had a partner like that, where it was like, oh, okay, now that like calmness and trust level is so dialed that I get to actually experiment and be super creative because I know my guy's just gonna do his job. He's gonna, he's gonna be there. And then also game time, like that, I can't remember what match it was. It was like, I think it was set point in either one of the finals or maybe like a quarter semi in, in the last event for the PPA. You hit an Ernie, I think for a winner to win the set. I can't remember. Was it that or the save one? And I was like, there it is, dude. It's like, he's just the freaking, the steady, calm, the dude that just puts in the work and then creative highlight reel. It was really cool <laughs> to see, but I think that's something for listeners to, to really focus when they watch these matches to see how like structured and stable of a player you are. It's so fun. Like for me, that's like one of the coolest things to watch somebody who just like over time, just does their job and plays at such a high level that it's like almost they don't recognize it because you're not flashy. You're not like yelling and screaming and talking to the crowd at time. You're just like, you're there the whole time. It's so <laughs> oh, well, cool, dude. I love well, it. Thanks. I appreciate that. And I feel like I'm at my best when I could tell Ben, just let loose, go for your yeah. shots. I got you. If you miss, it's fine. I'm going to be a backboard over here. 
And I've told him that in certain matches where he's maybe a little passive. He's not bringing energy. I'm like, go attack, go light them up. I got my side. Just yeah. feel free to do that because you need somebody who's a little bit more aggressive, more creative and somebody who's just never going to miss. Yeah. Just green light. That's what my guy told me. Green light, bro. And I'd go back and yeah. bomb serve when normally I'd be like nervous to keep it in. And then we go on some like six point run. And I'd be like, Green light, bro. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for being that like foundation for me to be able to be creative because I'm not worried. That's huge. Never apologize when you guys go on rants like that. <laughs> that was <laughs> Thomas is just chilling there for what, I know, what, like, 20 sorry. minutes. That <laughs> you guys just I my mind was blown like five times over. 